All right, welcome back. I'm Alex. I study physics and maths, and I use it to analyze game physics. Let's talk about something cool, particularly the newest character in TSP, the Tech Prodigy, and specifically their ability called Plasma Cannon. Now, this ability immediately caught my eye for the way it looks, its color, and clearly it's unlike most other projectiles in this game. Take Cyborg's Blitz Shot, for example. It's orange, right? Plasma Cannon, on the other hand, is blue, which got me thinking, what exactly is the difference between this ability and some other projectiles? Well, let's get into a bit of science, like I always do. Plasma is one of the four states of matter, and is predominantly characterized by its makeup of charged particles. It's an electrically conducting medium where positively and negatively charged particles are produced from the ionization of atoms in a gas. Plasmas are typically also associated with some very prominent high energy processes such as the sun, auroras, lightning, and welding arcs. You see, we can actually create plasmas experimentally by heating gases to extremely high temperatures, which effectively increases the kinetic energy of the molecules within the gas, causing frequent and energetic collisions between its atoms such that electrons are ripped free, resulting in a combination of ions and electrons within the now so-called plasma. So now that we understand that, let's take a look at this ability again. The mechanism of the armed weapon appears to charge up as the ability is held, likely a testament to how plasma is formed from high energy interactions within a gas. If we assume there's some ignition gas inside this component which is being heated over time, we can then assume that the firing mechanism redirects the now plasma in the desired direction. But what makes this actual attack so special though? Well, a blue core suggests that this plasma is very, very hot. This is since high energy plasma emits short wavelength light with blue and violet hues discerning temperatures that are over tens of thousands of Kelvin. The orange edges around it tells me that there is less energetic plasma toward the outside, probably from the dissipation of heat while it interacts with the air around it. Here's an interesting part though. Plasma itself is very conductive, meaning that it responds to strong electromagnetic fields it would be acceptable to assume that some form of electromagnetic acceleration or even magnetohydrodynamic forces are being used to propel it in the desired direction. It's probably the case also that the bullet itself is contained within some electromagnetic field that prevents it from dissipating before it's traveled the approximate 39.2 meters that it does. So is this more or less impressive than some other projectiles? Well, I'm gonna say more impressive. You see, Blitzshot, for example, is likely the result of a similar concept, however, its coloration being completely orange and the fact that it can travel much further implies to me that it requires less energy to A, create, B, fire, and C, sustain. Unlike the plasma cannon, which requires an excessive amount of energy to perform even one of these steps. So, I suppose you want some numbers, huh? Well, like I said, blue plasma is tens of thousands of degrees Kelvin, and considering that its structure is sustained for honestly quite a long period of time, it could be even more. So let's take a fun number, 50,000 Kelvin, and tell you that this cannon here probably intakes oxygen and nitrogen from the atmosphere around it. I'll assume a 50-50 molar ratio and use a lovely little equation, Q equals N CV delta T where I can calculate CV to be roughly 5 over 2 times 8.314, which is 20.79, joules per mole per Kelvin. I know that delta T is probably about 49,700 Kelvin, and I know that for one mole total of this gas mixture, it would require 20.79 times 49,700, which equals 1,033,263 joules of energy. Now hold it right there. We also need to find the ionization energy for this gas. For oxygen, it's 13.26 electron volts per atom, and for nitrogen, it's 14.53 electron volts per atom. This means at a molar concentration of 0.5 each, we'd have another rough 1.3 million joules added to that singular mole of gas's energy total. So past all that, how many moles are in this attack? How many moles of gas would produce this ball of destruction? Well, it's probably less than one. A fairly quick look at this ball of plasma shows its volume is probably not much more than a meter cubed. And using the ideal gas law, I can estimate a rough decimal of moles inside this sphere and call the energy required for it to be produced around 2.2 million joules. But remember, I did say that this attack was probably more impressive. Well, remember how I mentioned that this has some sort of sustaining mechanism in the form of electromagnetic fields? Well, how hard would that be to produce at that complexity? Well, I don't know, but let me break it down for you. 
Electrically charged particles have a particular behavior when passing through a magnetic field given by what's called the Lorentz force. Basically, a positive charge moving to the right through a magnetic field that would come straight out of your screen would be curved downwards. That being said though, if it moves parallel to the field in the same direction, this doesn't occur. Generally, you'd see these charged particles spiral around the direction of the applied magnetic field. So what does that have to do with our weapon? Well, what I'm saying is that there must be a magnetic field being emitted in the firing direction such that this ball of plasma is maintaining its shape. If the magnetic field was sort of shot out in a cylinder, then any particles that hit this boundary would probably be curved downward and back into the plasma structure. This doesn't account for the space in front or behind, nor some of the curvature of our sphere though. This is a highly technologically advanced weapon that likely requires millions of joules to operate each second. And that's about all I'm trying to say here. I hope you learned something there and enjoyed listening to a bit of yap for once rather than tons of equations flying across the screen. And no, university is not going well. Thanks for watching. And using the Igu... Igu? The Igu gas law. Yeah, that's what it's called.